This is a case of severe microphthalmos with coloboma with horizontal corneal diameter of around 8.5 mm. There are various difficulties in such a case, namely, the eye is small and offers a crowded anterior segment and less space in anterior chamber. Pupillary dilatation is often less than optimal. Nucleus is hard and usually brown. Many times there is inferior zonular dehiscence and iol of suitable size is usually not available. Anterior capsule is stained with trepan blue. An important consideration is to determine which method of cataract surgery should be employed. Manual SICS is a good and safe technique to be chosen. While making the section, the incision should be at least equal to or a bit larger than the horizontal corneal diameter. This is to ensure smooth nucleus delivery. Similarly, the scleral pocket dissection is more lateral and internal lip is also wider than usual. There was microphacodonesis and a lax anterior capsule. A utrata forceps provides the best tool in making successful capsular excess in such a case. During hydrodissection, we realized that the nucleus was large and had plenty of epinucleus at the same time. There was no way to prolapse such a nucleus into the anterior chamber simply by a hydrodissection. It was debulked with some aspiration of cortex to ease nucleus prolapse and delivery. More cortex was removed from around the equator. An attempt was made to prolapse the nucleus into the anterior chamber. It was simply rotating in its place but refusing to come into the anterior chamber. More cortex was removed from around the nucleus to debulk the nucleus further. Despite several attempts, it was not possible to prolapse the nucleus in anterior chamber. Hence, innovatively, the irrigating vectus was introduced inside the capsular bag behind the nucleus. The nucleus was first prolapsed and then delivered in one swift move, taking care not to catch the anterior capsule or iris tissue during the delivery. Irrigation and aspiration of the cortex was done using Simcoe cannula. An IOL with 5mm haptic was chosen. Even that was too big for the microphthalmic eye. The IOL haptics were suitably trimmed to reduce the overall diameter to avoid IOL crowding inside the capsular bag and any subsequent anterior vaulting and pupillary capture. The modified IOL was then carefully introduced inside the bag and then the haptics were dialed with some difficulty into a horizontal position. It is important to move both the leading and the trailing haptics to avoid any undue friction of the haptic edges with capsular fornices. Visco was removed and the case was closed with satisfactory IOL centration. Another case was the fellow eye of the same patient. Corneal as well as pupillary size were a tad smaller than the previous eye. Adhering to the same principles, a larger scleral section was made and wider tunnel dissection was achieved. A continuous capsular excess was ensured and hydrodissection was done. At this point, the superior iris started prolapsing out of the section and pupil became smaller. 
Ultimately, a small sphincterectomy was undertaken and pupil was enlarged. This enlarged the pupil size to allow the nucleus to pass through. Again, in a bold move, the irrigating vectus was introduced behind the nucleus inside the capsular bag. The nucleus was delivered by pulling it out of its bag. Notice here that the inferior zonules were missing but the bag was stable. The cornea measured less than 8 mm wide. and the nucleus measured just over 6 millimeters. Again, the iole haptics were suitably trimmed to achieve a comfortable in-back fixation. In this way, tackling a case of microphthalmos with coloboma with dense nuclear cataract requires special skills and modifications in surgical technique to achieve a desirable outcome. I thank you for your kind attention.